Okay, so today we're going to talk about like intro to matrices. Uh, Tuesday was three by three systems. Okay, so initially, Ethan and Jack, initially it doesn't appear that three by three systems and intro to matrices have much to do with each other. And that's sort of right. Like what we did yesterday and what we do today, um, they feel like completely separate deals. But on Friday, we will use matrices to solve three by three systems. And makes it a lot easier. A lot easier. What's that? So yes, with calculator. So is that part of the test with the calculator? Part two has calculator. So the test is still all no calculator, and we get around this by we'll do some some problems that just say set up but do not solve. So it sort of saves you time because you don't have to type in everything into the calculator because it is kind of a pain to go to the matrix, type in nine different matrix elements. So we're not going to do that. But this is the, the connection. So again, yesterday was crazy weird by hand. We just did a couple of those. Um, today, it feels like we're doing something completely different. But Friday, we'll put the two things together. All right, so back to today's notes, matrices. Um, matrix is a rectangular array of numbers, um, like a spreadsheet or a seating chart. Um, here's some examples looking down the rest of the page. Um, so a couple of intro things about them. They have a dimension or an order, um, and it's always row by column. You count the rows, um, and then you count the columns. So a couple of things about that. Row by column, um, we're going to use this several times. Like RC's Pizza. I hadn't used that one before. I'm a little more old school than that. There's a certain type of cola called RC Cola. Are you more familiar with RC Cola? Like you can still get it at the stores, like blue with the red RC on it, I think. But RC's Pizza works fine. Whatever you need to do, RC. I forgot to go by the store and buy a RC's Cola to sit up here with me today. Um, so R and then C. Some people, though, get confused on like, like this one right here. Is this a 3 by 2 or a 2 by 3? Two by three. Two by three. No, three by two. Wait, say columns? Rows first. No, rows first. <coughs> yeah. So the next question is, well, wait a minute. Which one are rows? Which ones are columns? <coughs> what are those things outside the, the White House called? Columns. 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 Which, what do they look like? Show me with your hands. Yes. All right. The columns outside of the White House are... Maybe if you live in a fancy house, you got some columns outside your house. I don't. I don't have columns outside my house either. Not only that kind of fancy. So the columns are the up and down thing. So rows would be like rows of chairs in a, a, a stadium, maybe. What row are you on? So how many rows does this thing have? Does this one have two? two and three columns. So that's a two by three. And this one's a two by three. Uh, and that's good because if you want to add matrices, they have to have the same dimensions. Which, that sort of makes sense because to add them, you add corresponding entries, meaning we're going to add the, the top left plus the top left and put it in the top left. So our answer, we can know this already, our answer is going to be a 2 by 3 matrix. And so adding matrices or subtracting matrices is pretty simple. So like top middle plus top middle would be 7.3, and it goes in the top middle. And then top right plus top right, 1 plus 3, goes in the top right. almost out of colors, 0 plus negative 1.2 would be negative 1.2. Switch to highlighters. 
negative 2 <coughs> plus 2.4. Well, that one's a little bit tricky, I guess. would be 0.4. And then 1 plus 0 is 1. So adding matrices is super easy. Just add the corresponding pieces or parts or elements. Multiply by a scalar. Each entry is multiplied. Um, you can just think of this as distribute the scalar. So this is pretty easy too because it, it works probably like you think it would work. If there's a 3 out front, everybody gets the 3. Uh, so far, just hold off though. So far. 3 times 0, 3 times 4, 3 times 1. So, pretty simple on multiplying by a scalar. <coughs> now, matrix multiplication is where things get a little bit uh, tricky, difficult, weird even. Um, Here's how you determine if it's possible. I'm going to word this a little bit differently. If possible is if the inside dimensions match. You'll see what I mean by that in a moment. So, let's, so if the inside dimensions match, then it's a yes, you can do it. If they don't match, then you can't do it. So let's see. Is this a 3 by 2 or a 2 by 3, this first one? 3 by 2. Three rows, two columns. That's a three by two. And then, well, if that one's three by two, I'm pretty sure this one's a two by three because it's like reversed. So two rows, three columns, two by three. Okay, my, my sort of inside dimensions are both two, so this will work. Um, not necessarily, because, well, the outsides, it doesn't matter what the outsides are. If the insides match, then you can do the multiplication. And the answer, or the, the product matrix, the product, or the answer matrix, is the outside dimensions. Well, it's the dimensions, though. So you're looking at the right things, the 3 and the 3. So the answer for this one is going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. Okay. So this is weird. You're going to multiply a 3 by 2 and a 2 by 3, and the answer is going to, like, blow up to a 3 by 3. What if... What if, so I'll write this down, hope this is more helpful than confusing. What if I switch the order of those? Your answer would be a 2 by 2. Like the threes would match, meaning you could do it, and your answer would be a 2 by 2. So the order definitely matters for matrix multiplication. So if it's on the left, then you put the row. And then if it's on the right, then you put the column. I don't get what you mean. If the inside dimensions match, you can do it. And then you, the answer will be the outside dimensions. Now, how to actually multiply, how to get the elements of there, is the same way you do dimensions. It's row times column. So you can still remember the uh, RC pizza or RC cola, whatever you like. This is where things get a little bit weird because it's, it's rows of the first, rows of the first matrix times columns of the second matrix. So a row of the first matrix times a column of the second matrix. So would it be where you put in top left? And then that'll go sort of where they intersect, so that would be top left. 
we'll put it in row one, column one. So that's the next question is like, well, wait a minute, how am I supposed to multiply a row by a column? Wait, so then do we? Um, you're going to multiply the pieces and add the things that you get. So you're going to do 0 times 2. Yes. 0 times 2 plus negative 1 times 0. And then where it goes... Well, we multiplied row 1 times column 1, so we should probably put our answer in row 1, column 1. So now we can do row 1, column 2. And maybe using a highlighter wasn't the best plan because now row 1's already highlighted. So I'll go with the red circle here. Row 1 <coughs> times column 2. Zero times one plus negative one times three would be negative three. And where should I put that answer if I multiplied row one times column two? Where should that go? Column two. Row one, column two. Row one, column two. So if you, you know, most of you, once you get the hang of it, you're not going to take the time to show the work like this. But man, it's helpful. Row one, column two is what I'm multiplying. So that's where my answer goes, row 1, column 2, negative 3. And then let's do row 1, column 3. Row 1, column 3, that would be 0 times 3 plus negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. And since I did row 1 times column 3, where do you think we should put the answer? Row 1, column 3. And yes, this is why people do this in calculators. It gets a little tedious because you have to do this nine times to fill out this, this matrix. And each of the nine times requires two multiplications and an addition. So two multiplications and addition is three operations. Nine times, that's, so you got 27 little math problems in order to multiply this, you know, relatively simple matrix. And you're right, every time it's a different combination of numbers, so you've got to be super careful here. Let's do one more together, and then I'm going to let you finish this one out. So row one, or excuse me, this would be row two, column one. Uh, for some people, it's like it's helpful to actually put your finger on the the page and run your finger across row two, column one. Like if you're a more tactile learner type person, row two, column one would be negative two plus zero. And that was in row two, or that came from row two, column one. So I'm going to put it in row two, column one. Okay, I'm going to press pause and let you. All right. Again, a few of you wrote down all of these, and a few of you switched that off, and you're like, nah, I'm just going to like be careful and do it in my head. All right, we like square matrices because you can get the row and column backwards and it won't matter, right? So what are the dimensions of this matrix? Two by two. Two by two, two, by two because, hey, it's, I don't care how you count, it's two by two. So is it eligible to be multiplied? Yes. And what will the answer be? What size will the answer be? A two by two. What's the largest part Four by four would be way too big. Because you'd have to do 16, uh, 16 elements of a four by four. And you'd have to do four different, you'd have to do four products, add them up 16 times. When would you even need a matrix? That question we're going to get to today. When would you even need a matrix? 
the matrices in like business, real world applications probably have more application than I don't know if it's fair to say most of the stuff we do, but matrices are hugely helpful in storing information uh, efficiently and doing stuff with the information. So it's a good question and it has a good answer. Um, <coughs> let's try this one. I haven't called on people in a while, so let's pull out the old popsicle sticks and I'll pull people for uh, the, each of the elements. So Row times column, row times column, row times column. Not yet, because I want to do some of these setups with you for this worksheet. Okay, it's word problems, but look at what we ask you to do. Define the variables. That's going to be pretty easy. Set up a system of equations. That won't be too bad. Write the matrix equation for the system. And those are the three things we're going to do today. And then Friday we'll worry about solving them because we're going to use a calculator to solve them. Yes. Yes. Is right. Okay, so number one. The sum of three numbers is 18. Oh, I don't know what the three numbers are. Find the numbers. So what's an equation where the sum is... But I don't. There's three different numbers, so I need three different x variables. So let's go with x plus y plus z equals 18. Well, maybe I can color code my equations to the sentences. The first number is 8 times the sum of the second and third. The first is, is means equals, the first is x equals 8 times the sum of, so x equals 8 times y plus z. And the third number is 3 times the first, so z equals 3x. Okay, I like the first equation because it's got x, y, and z all on the same side. X. Oh, we didn't define the variables, so x is the first, y is the second, and z is the third. Like we didn't write that down until just now, but you sort of did that on your kind of on the on your own or. Okay, I would like to get x, y, and z all on the same side for my red equation here. So, I want x, y, and z all on the same side. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, that, that would work. <laughs> You're right. I don't want to do it that way. So divide by y plus z, and that would get them all on the same side. But I want them added and subtracted. So, let's distribute the 8 and then subtract them over. So x minus 8y minus 8z. What would be left on the right if I subtracted them over? Zero. Zero. Wait, what? Right, if I distribute oh, the 8 okay. and yeah. subtract them over. Yeah. But some people subtract them over and they're like, yep, x minus 8y minus 8z. And I'm like, yeah, and it's still an equation equals zero. Um, what about this one? How do we... Put both of those on the same side with adding and subtracting. Okay. Well, you could do it either way. You could move the z, the three x over or the z over. Either one. Three x minus z equals zero. What do you mean? Well, they both equal zero. Oh, you could. You could set them equal to each other. I don't know how helpful that would be because you'd still have x, y, and z in there. So it would not be wrong. It just would not be helpful. So what do we do with the first equation? We didn't have to. That one sort of set up the way we wanted it, so we didn't have to do anything to it. We like that one. 
guess we just plug all the numbers. Now, here's how we turn that into a matrix equation. All we have to do, now that we've got it set up nice and neat, is pick off the coordinates, or pick off the coefficients, excuse me, 1, 1, 1, 1, negative 8, negative 8. I'm just grabbing the coefficients. Or you could say you're wiping out the variables and taking what's left. Is it three, zero, two, one? So 3, 0, negative, negative 1. <coughs> and then because of how, sort of dipping into Friday's lesson, but that's okay. Because of how matrix multiplication works, row by column, or I guess from your perspective, row by column, then what goes in this column matrix in order for 1 to be multiplied by x and, and y and z? Where did you get the 3, 0, and the 4? The green equation. The green equation? How did you get it in that order? Uh, how many y's are there? Right, and so if you think about the row by column thing, x, y, z, and then x minus 8y minus 8z, 3x, 0y's, negative 1z. And each of those things would equal 18, 0, and 0. And so we turn this into a matrix equation. And that's where we'll stop today in terms of solving this. Because I don't want to get the calculators out and work on all the buttons. Like We've done enough for today. But we are like grabbing a calculator and typing things in away from the answer. Like We're not going to have to do the math from here on. The calculator is going to handle it on Friday. So on the test, when you don't have a calculator, it'll be, it'll, basically the instructions will be these first three things. Define the variables, set up a system, write a matrix equation, stop there. How'd you get to 18? Well, it's all the answers yeah. from the equation. You're literally just like taking everything. Like, You're kind of just taking everything and putting it in a matrix format. But you have to have all the variables on the side. Yeah. Right. So the important thing is setting this up correctly. Then it's nice and ready. And mean, on Friday, this is going to be super easy. Friday's going to be it. Friday's going to be a where are the buttons on the calculator lesson. That's all Friday's going to be. Once you find the buttons and know which ones to push. It's easy. Yes, sir, Ryan. So will we get a different <coughs> answer for the green one if we subtracted 3x instead? No. So if you had negative 3x plus z equals 0, you're right. This matrix would look different, but you'd still get the same answer. Because you've still got the negative one, right? Right. Yeah. So it would still work. And that would go for any of these. Like if you took this first one and like multiplied through by 2, and so you had 2, 2, 2, and 36. Like it would look different, but after we do the thing on Friday, you'll get the same answer. And that might be something, if we remember, we can kind of play around with because it's so easy to let the calculator do the work. You can make some changes and see, oh, it's still the same. Let's try number two. Greg has $20,000 to invest in three types of stocks. He expects the annual returns on stocks X, Y, and Z. I think we've got our uh, our variables there. To be, I think this one, I wouldn't have you write it out because they're labeled X, Y, and Z. So if you use X, Y, and Z, then we'll know what you're talking about. If for some reason you switched your variables to A, B, and C, I would need to know who went with what. But why would you do that? Uh, the X percentage is 12%, the Y percentage is 10, the Z is 6%. You want the combined investment in Y and Z. Uh oh, here comes an equation. The combined investment in Y and Z to be three times the amount invested in stock X. That obviously is. That is not that yes. So, hey, let's see. Um, so the total is $20,000. So that, that gives me one equation, I think. There's sort of a hidden equation there. 
So what needs to add up to twenty thousand dollars? X plus Y plus Z is twenty thousand dollars. He wants the combined investment of Y and Z. So combined investment of Y and Z. Y plus Z equals 3x. So that one we'll have to rearrange to make it matrix format. We'll get there in a minute. And then this last one, he wants the average return to be 9%. So he wants he wants to get nine percent of twenty thousand. That's what he wants as like his answer. But what's gonna add up to nine percent of twenty thousand? Oh, the percent of each one. So Well by like their per by their given percentage, yeah. Point twelve so 12% of x, 0.1y, 0.06z equals whatever 0 0.09 times 2,000 is. Oh, you could just leave it like that, right? We're headed for the calculator. Um, wait a minute. 9 times 2 is 18, so it's 18, and then how many zeros after it? 18,000 would be like 90%. So 1,800 would be 9%. Uh, yeah. So x plus y plus z equals 20,000. My red equation. Oh, here's another one where I need to move things. It doesn't matter which side I move them to. So you can move the 3x over and have negative 3x, or you can move the y and the z over. It doesn't matter. Negative 3x plus y plus z equals, oh, what does that equal? Zero. Zero. And then the green one's, the green one's pretty much set up the right way as is. 0.12x, 0.1y, 0.06z equals 1800. And I'm running out of space. But now I just need to grab the coefficients. So what's the first row in the matrix? One, one, one. one, one, one. And the second row is? Negative three, one, one. And the third row is just those percentages, 0 0.12, 0 0.1, 0 0.06. What's my column matrix? X, Y, Z. And then my answer matrix, I'm going to, yeah. How about that for messing things up? It's not wrong. It looks funny, but it's not wrong. And we'll worry about solving it on Friday, because now all we're going to do is go to the calculator, learn where all the buttons are, and be good. Why don't you try number three? Try number three. I don't know. They're all A, B, and C. So A is the American Bowling Conference. If you're going to use it, unless they're, I don't think these are as obvious. So A is American. Could we just underline it and above it? Sure, you can do that. So which one's B? The women's bowling. <laughs> I don't like B because they all have bowling in them. Um, you could use A, W, and Y, but if you want to use A, B, and C, that's fine. Just make just make sure you label them. And then the Young American Bowling, you're calling that one C? Yes. Sure. All right. I think I would have gone with A, W, and Y, but you do you. All right, so see if you can come up with those equations. Step oh, one. You just do five. Oh, you just do five. That's a lot easier. Did you have five zero 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 zero? So 
I'm going to just say that my answers will be in millions, and I can put the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 on at the very end, or I can just say each one is in millions. Okay, but we're not through yet because I want you to set those up as a, a matrix system. And then now you're, you're ready to go. All right, we'll stop there. In fact, you can stop there um, completely, and then on Friday... We'll finish, you'll set up the rest of them and go to the calculator. So today's assignment then is just, we're sort of backing up. Today's assignment is back to the ones that you didn't like, the evens. This is not easy, but I understand this. Yeah, it's not easy, it's just, but it's not hard. So, I should let you do those in groups. While you, yes, you have time to work and you can work in groups. That's fine. But before you get back to that, so that's the assignment for today. Again, on Friday, we'll finish, or we'll, yeah, I guess finish that matrix worksheet. Um, and that should be a, a relatively easy Friday, so that's kind of nice.